Welcome to Talent Talks. My name is Mike Kinsey. I'm a senior director here at Titus Talent Strategies. Want to introduce you to my dear friend and colleague, Ellen Otter, who's our manager of recruiting and development. Today, we're going to talk all about onboarding. Ellen, where do we even start with this process? Where, where do you begin when it comes to onboarding, if you can free speak on that? Mm, absolutely. Well, I truly believe that onboarding starts during the interview process because you're really getting people used to the culture, getting to really know the mission, the values, those core lived values, as we refer to them at Titus, and really what the expectations are going to be, what the environment will be like, and kind of, you know, what's going to be expected of them as they come into play. So I think it starts really early on. Yeah. So you're talking about values of the organization, you say core values or lived values. How do you how do you ensure that those values kind of seep into your onboarding process with new hires? Good question. We do talk about them uh, quite a bit during the uh, interview and onboarding process. As part of our interview process, actually, we do have our candidates do a core values exercise where they reach out and have some core values conversations to really understand, you know, beyond what you're reading on paper on our website, like what do those core values look like at Titus and for our organization? How do we see those lived? So they should have a pretty good idea by the time they get to day one and onboarding, but then um, really coming through in the expectations of how we're living those and the work that we're doing, you know, following the procedures, learning to do things well and in, within compliance early on, um, that definitely helps with bringing those core values through from day one and even before day one. Oh, definitely. I, it's awesome because it's like you're bringing a little bit of objectivity to a somewhat subjective measure when it comes to value alignment. That's, that's Absolutely. Really There's a lot of talk about customizing onboarding experiences for people. And I know that most companies have their set onboarding process. So how do you actually maintain that level of integrity of making sure they learn everything that they need to, but still customizing that onboarding experience? Well, personally, um, at Titus and within uh, some of the tools that we utilize, Predictive Index is obviously a huge one for learning how to customize that process individually for people. Um, you are certainly the experts around here on that. So I'd love to hear your thoughts, but I think a lot of it does, you know, from my side and from spending that time with people, a lot of it comes from um, taking their cues. You know, are they taking a lot of notes? Are they a high level detail person? Are they more, I wanna be able to reference that for later? You know, um, take reading off of their cues has, is huge for me throughout the process. but. I'd love you to tell me your thoughts a little <laughs> bit more on pulling in the predictive index in that. Yeah, I mean, psychometric assessments have been my world for a long time now, and it's it's certainly obviously a passion of mine. Our, our consulting division at Titus, that's something that we really try to you know, bring that influence and bring that data point into the onboarding process, no doubt, is what are the natural behavioral tendencies of the individual? And it, it can be something as simple as, this person really does not crave social interaction with other people. They're a bit more introspective. They like a bit more one-on-one -on -one interaction. Probably not the best idea to bring them out to lunch with all 20 of the people at the office that day. And it, it seems so, it seems almost elementary in some way, but really it's so powerful because people, a first impression is really big. And they get an idea of this, this company took the time to kind of tailor that experience to me, or it made me feel really comfortable. My experience was this. And they know pretty quickly, at least how much they like the organization that they started with. So when they go home to their significant other, they can tell them that day was really exhausting or that day was really, really good. And it can be as complex then as this person has naturally a higher need to have their hand held and to have things laid out for them, or this person needs something big picture. So if you train somebody the exact same way, let's say you give the person that's more big picture, a lot of details, they're going to be bored. If you give somebody that needs their hand held, just big picture ideas, 
they're going to start to be lost and you're, they're going to crave more of that feedback and mentorship and structure. So it, it gets pretty deep, but that's part of the way you could actually maintain the integrity of it, but customize the experience. I absolutely agree. And I see a lot of those things come through in our onboarding at Titus and really whether it's in person or virtual, you know, being able to make that a, a more catered experience to what they would be receptive to. Okay, that is a perfect segue. Let's talk about that a little bit. So virtual onboarding. We, I mean, we have done this for a while. You know, we've been a mobile company since our inception, but so many organizations going mobile at this point. How do you, how do you do it? How do you make sure that it's still fun or interactive and engaging for people? Well, it's been interesting. Um, historically, we had always really tried to have new hires come into our Milwaukee office to be able to have onboarding the first two days in person. And that is fantastic because you get to put a lot of names with the faces and you get to meet more people. You really get to be enveloped in the space and the feel. Um, obviously, due to the pandemic and other things going on, and sometimes it's just not geographically possible to have people coming in to the office. We have done quite a bit more of the remote onboarding. Um, I think one thing is that there is still remains a high level of consistency in the process and in what we do. I always, the Friday before um, someone's start date, usually our start dates are Mondays, I always send out a full agenda that gives them an idea of what will day one look like and who will I be with? What will day two look like? And then kind of that next, you know, next week going into the next like 30, 60, 90 days and what that will look like for them. So they understand the expectations and all of those things. I want to make sure that in that agenda, they get some, be, be able to put names with faces, even if they're not going to meet those people in person. So I literally have a picture of the pertinent people that they're going to have on their teams or, you know, in, in their training, that really helps. Um, and they feel a little more connected, um, whether they're remote or, um, or in person for onboarding. We also have uh, a CEO welcome call and a president welcome call throughout that first week. They get some time with their manager during that first week. And in, in my day one with them, whether it's in person or, you know, or on video, we schedule you know, groups of time, taking breaks kind of as needed, but get to know them a little bit on a personal level and then start diving into things, but always reminding people, I know you're drinking from the fire hose right now. This is gonna be a lot. I don't expect you to remember it all. I don't expect you to be able to recite all these things, but I just want it to be something in your brain that you think, oh, I did hear something about that and, and I got a resource that I could go back to. So being able to draw on those things, I think really helps. That's awesome. That's really good. So they know exactly what's coming. They've got their agenda. They've got the people that they're gonna be interacting with, who they report to. That's really okay. big. That's really, really big. I mean, even if you were to do that in person, that's probably something you should do or could do. Yeah. But especially remote, that gives them much more of a foundation to work Absolutely. on. Absolutely. And even some resources like we have a who to contact, you know, form or the tightest abbreviations form because, you know, you get comfortable and you start slinging around terms that people come in and they think, what are you talking about? So doing those things really, I think, helps set people at ease making sure they're up and running in technology and all the tools that they're gonna need. They're connected with the right people. They've got appointments in their calendar for what's gonna be happening next or what happens tomorrow. Um, and we always kind of start things out too, like on day one, our employees start for usually about 30, 45 minutes with, um, mm -hmm. with our HR manager and the, the overall who they've already had contact with through their uh, you know, initial hire process. But then I start out really very casually trying to give them a feel more for the organization itself. You know, what does our accountability or organizational chart look like? The who's who, you know, kind of breaking it up into departments and teams and understanding that. Um, looking at some of the not so fun things, but necessary things of like making sure you enter PTO and where you do that, how you can access your pay stubs and benefits and all those things. Um, I also wanna make sure they understand like the roles within Titus. 
and especially for their growth path, you know, and what, how successfully onboarding and following their mentorship is going to help them in their career path as well. So giving them the potential career path up front for them to work towards. Yeah, that's great. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, this sounds like it's a lot to cover. And I, you mentioned drinking from the fire hose, though that certainly gives you the visual, but how do you, how long, I mean, would you anticipate an onboarding should be if you had an ideal? Well, generally speaking, I would say I like to have a good four hours, like four solid work hours with the new hire, um, depending on how the level of detail that that person would like, uh, it can definitely go longer. Uh, but at least four hours, I say with me and another 30, 45 minutes with HR for sure. Um, and then usually on day one is also our CEO welcome call. And if we're in person, hopefully we're able to go out to lunch and, you know, enjoy some camaraderie through that time, but it's a pretty busy full first day. And then our scheduled day two is directly assigned with their assigned mentor. So basically coming on at Titus, they have a one-on-one -on -one mentor that's going to be their number one go-to, their buddy, their resource throughout the first definitely 90 days of their training and mentorship. So we want to get them with that person face-to-face -face or on video as quickly as possible so they can really start working on real projects together as well. Okay, so it goes beyond just kind of the buddy system when you talk about a mentorship program. This isn't just somebody to talk to you about frustrations. This is somebody doing work with them. Yeah, we have a like a 30, 60, 90 day checklist basically of all the areas that we wanna make sure this new hire has exposure to, experience in. They understand our process. They understand all the templates or the things they might be using. Um, they've had time to fall shadow and listen in on all different types of conversations and meetings we want them, them to have as much exposure as possible before they're in the hot seat, you know, or they're in that front seat to be able to do it as well. So really we say it's a 365 day onboarding mentorship process <laughs> at Titus, you know, through your first year. I love that. That's really, really good. So do these mentors do this as the next step in their career? Do they get rewarded? Is it the kindness of their heart? How do, how do you have it structured? Internal. Well, there definitely has to be a high level of servanthood in that mentor because they want to be serving these new hires in the company. Yeah. Um, but luckily, that is one of our values, and we have a lot of very servant-hearted, servant-minded people around it. Uh, it is part of the career progression, though, because generally our senior consultants, our managers take on more of the responsibility in mentorship, and they commit to it. There are expectations. They need to be certified that their work is up to all the standards and they're really teaching accurately. And then the expectation is that through the first 90 days, they're spending at least 40 hours total with this person. So it breaks down to like 3.3 hours per week. And I always recommend make sure, especially in that first maybe three, four weeks, you're scheduling that time. So you say, okay, we're getting together today. This is what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna share screens or we're gonna meet in person. And we're going to really deep dive cover this conversation, you know, of what needs to be done and to make sure that you have a solid understanding and a feel for things. As the mentorship continues, like 60, 90 days, usually that new hire is more off and running and able to function in a lot of things where then they lean on the mentor as more of a touch point or a consultant, but don't need as much of the instructional work. That's nice. <laughs> throwing people into the fire yeah after, no. the, after the you know your your section where you're kind of doing the onboarding you're kind of passing them over to a mentor to massage some of these ideas in absolutely and the, i did want to add the mentors do get credit for that like work credit um for it for them as well so it's not just a pro bono although <laughs> it is coming from a place of servant heartedness definitely that's really really good um the, the last piece that I think we could cover is how do you make it enjoyable for them to, to onboard, especially, let's talk specifically in the remote setting right now. How do you make sure that they're having fun during this process? 
Well, I naturally lean towards fun. So I definitely <laughs> enjoy, you know, being with these people. I try to, you know, make sure you're starting off on a personal note. And getting to know each other a little bit, obviously taking their cues, you know, this is someone's first day, they don't want to, you know, reveal too much or be too personal and things, but just being warm and open yourself, you know, and letting them know that um, you're there for them. You know, any question is absolutely fine. If we need to go back to things, um, making sure that I'm accountable to the things that they need, you know, is really big, but just kind of joking and living real life throughout the process you know um it is what it is and kind of sharing stories about people when i'm explaining the org chart you know i'll talk about some stories that i have of my experiences learning with or you know working with certain people as well and it helps them get a little bit more comfortable in that way and all those things too so obviously it doesn't hurt if you can go out to lunch with a group or you know things like that as well right. That's really, really good. Another shameless plug, last one for predictive index. This is where it's been nice to show kind of how the manager and direct report actually behave together, potential conflict, potential strengths, and you can kind of adjust your behaviors to that person a little bit more, which can be really valuable. That's huge. That is huge. And it's been one of the most um, impactful tools for me at Titus, because let's face it, you know, there's all different types of people in the world. We all have different personality types. We get in there and we want, you know, different things. We're looking for different levels of information and just being able to understand how someone communicates and, you know, their comfort level in certain things, it is really huge. And you're able to tailor your persona appropriately for your audience, which really helps. Yes. Well, this, this was great. I'm sure there's even more that we can cover. I would love to tap more into the, your expertise in this area. I know we're, we're up on time, but Ellen, thank you so much. Again, Ellen Otter, our Manager of Recruiting and Development at Titus Talent Strategies. Um, my name, again, Mike Kinsey. This was Talent Talks at Titus Talent Strategies. Thanks so much for listening. Thank you.